Hey guys, today we stepped straight into a night, so cold your eyelashes could probably snap off if you blink too hard. Welcome to the Ice Age, the long, icy stretch of human history where surviving the night was less about Netflix binges and more about not turning into a human popsicle. You probably wouldn't believe this, but even here, in the frozen dark, people still manage to sleep. So, before you get comfortable, take a moment to like the video and subscribe but only if you genuinely enjoy what I do here. And while you're at it, let me know in the comments where you're watching from and what time it is for you. It always amazes me to imagine these stories reaching people across so many different corners of the world. Now, settle down, relax, and join me as we explore this fascinating journey through history. The first thing you notice is fire, orange light trembling against the vast black sky sparks lifting up like restless stars. You edge closer because every step away feels like daring the cold to bite your skin. Without fire, this night would be unbearable. It's more than warmth. It's a shield, a gathering point, and a way of saying to the darkness, sorry, but you don't get to win tonight. Of course, keeping that fire going wasn't as simple as flipping a switch. Somebody had to feed it constantly, making sure embers never died. Imagine trying to sleep and knowing if the flames went out, everyone might wake up frostbitten or not wake at all. That's one reason early groups often slept in shifts. There was always someone watching, someone poking the logs, someone half-dozing, but listening for wolves. And here's a quirky little detail. People sometimes use stones heated in the flames, wrapping them in hides to act like prehistoric hot water bottles. Imagine clutching one of those to your chest. Primitive. Yes, but surprisingly effective. Historians still wonder how much of Ice Age firemaking was daily routine versus desperate invention. Did everyone know how to spark flames from flint? Or did some groups depend on carrying a single ember for days, like the world's most stressful relay race? The night stretches long, but huddled by firelight, you feel a fragile kind of safety. The flames crackle, your breath fogs in the air, and somewhere deep inside, you realize this, firelight against endless night, is how humanity first learned to sleep without losing the battle to the cold. The fire has warmed your skin, but warmth alone doesn't make a bed. At some point, you have to lie down, and in the Ice Age, that was its own problem. The earth was a frozen slab that stole heat faster than you could make it. So you do what humans have always done, improvise. You gather pine boughs laying them in a springy mat that smells sharp and resinous. Then you stack animal hides on top, thick furs that still carry the musk of reindeer, bison, or maybe even mammoth if you're lucky. Suddenly, you've built yourself the original weighted blanket, cozy, protective, and just heavy enough that rolling over feels like an Olympic sport. But hey, at least you're not shivering. And here's something you probably didn't expect. Archaeologists have found evidence of bedding materials that go back tens of thousands of years, made not just of hides, but also grass and even insect-repelling plants. Yep, turns out your Ice Age mattress may have doubled as a bug deterrent because freezing to death wasn't the only concern. Nothing ruins a night's rest quite like lice having a party in your hair. Sleeping arrangements were layered, too. People often stacked materials in clever ways, building a cushion of branches, or moss to lift their bodies away from the frozen ground. Think of it as the Ice Age version of memory foam, primitive, but it worked. Of course, the debate remains. Did these makeshift beds belong to everyone equally, or did elders and skilled hunters claim the thickest furs while others settle for the floor? Historians still argue about whether Ice Age sleeping was egalitarian, or if bedtime carried its own quiet hierarchy. You lie down on your nest of fir and pine, the smell of smoke clinging to everything, the fire's glow flickering against the walls. Your back sighs into the cushion, your chest is wrapped in warmth, and for a moment, you realize this isn't just survival, it's comfort. Primitive, rough, maybe itchy in places, but comfort nonetheless. And so, despite the howling wind outside and the endless winter beyond, you stretch out, Wrap the hide closer and drift towards sleep, cradled by the small luxuries humans carved out of a merciless world. The fire is steady, the bedding soft enough, but the open night 
is still brutal. The wind sneaks in, snow finds every crack, and predators linger just beyond the glow. So you step inside, into a shelter, a place carved or built to keep the cold at bay. Sometimes it's a cave, stone walls curving around you, dripping faintly from melting ice, the air carrying the earthy smell of smoke layered on smoke from countless fires. The ceiling looms, dotted with soot, and you wonder how many families before yours huddled here, warming their bones in this same echoing hollow. Caves were more than shelters. They became canvases for paintings, for stories etched in ochre and ash, a place where sleep happened under the gaze of mammoths and lions drawn in flickering firelight. Other nights, the shelter isn't stone but built from bones. Picture mammoth ribs arched like cathedral beams, draped in hides stitched together, snow piled against the sides for insulation. It sounds strange, almost gothic, but to Ice Age families it was just practical architecture. Imagine lying under such a ceiling, your bed beneath the bones of a creature that once thundered across the plains. A little creepy, perhaps, but undeniably effective. And then there were snow shelters, shaped like the ancestors of igloos. Snow, oddly enough, insulates better than you'd think. Inside, the temperature could hover just around freezing, which, when the outside world dipped far lower, felt almost tropical. You might even sleep in relative comfort, though you'd still keep your furs wrapped tight. One quirky discovery. In some of these shelters, archaeologists have found neat pits dug into the ground, thought to be hearths or storage. But imagine for a second that they were foot-warming spots, tiny fire bowls glowing under where people slept. It's just a theory, but wouldn't you want a built-in underfloor heater when the Ice Age was doing its worst? And historians still puzzle over how portable these homes were. Did families carry their mammoth bone frames across the steps, or were they more permanent bases, reused season after season? No one's certain. Tonight, though, you're inside one of them. Thick walls muffling the wind, fire crackling in the center, warmth pooling where bodies gather. Outside, the night rages on, but here, wrapped in shelter and shadow, you finally feel the cold lose its grip. The fire hums low, your bedding is snug, and the shelter shields you from the wind. But the real secret to surviving the night isn't stone walls or animal hides. It's people. You don't sleep alone here. You curl up close, press shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, in a tangle of warmth that feels equal parts practical and intimate. Bodies are the heaters of the Ice Age. You lie near your kin, sometimes packed so tightly it's hard to tell whose arm or leg has found its way across your side. Children are kept in the middle, cocooned by adults like living insulation. Couples might share more than warmth, while others just sigh and surrender to the necessity of it. There's no shame in huddling close. Here, survival trumps personal space. And it's not only about warmth. These nights are when stories breathe. Around the fire, someone hums. Another whispers a tale about a hunt, a spirit, or the stars above the ice. Your eyelids grow heavy as words fade into rhythm. For all you know, the very first bedtime stories were born exactly like this. Half lullaby, half survival strategy. Kuirki detail. Some researchers believe that sleeping together in groups may have influenced the way humans develop social bonds. Think about it. Every night, you practice trust by closing your eyes beside others. Maybe that's why humans today still crave blankets, cuddles, and bedtime company. And yet, historians still wonder, was communal sleep always peaceful? Did light sleepers grumble at snorers even back then? Was there a designated side of the shelter for those who kick too much in their sleep? These are the questions no artifact can quite answer, though you suspect human nature hasn't changed all that much. As the night deepens, you feel yourself drifting with the group. Breaths fall into rhythm, the shelter warm with body heat, and for the first time tonight, you sense a strange truth. Sleep isn't just about shutting your eyes. It's about trust, about connection, about knowing that you won't wake alone in the cold. And so you sleep, not as one, but as many, a single woven fabric of warmth and breath beneath the heavy silence of the Ice Age. The fire flickers down to embers, 
the shelter sighs with the soft weight of snow outside, and you drift, not just into sleep, but into dreams. And here lies the quiet mystery. What did Ice Age people dream about? You close your eyes, hearing the breath of those around you, and let your mind wander where theirs once did. Maybe it was the hunt, the thundering of hooves, the chase across the plains, the triumph of survival. Or maybe it was stranger, more symbolic, visions shaped by the fire's glow and the vast stars overhead. Some scholars think dreams may have carried spiritual meaning, guiding decisions, or inspiring the art we still find painted on cave walls. Imagine waking and telling your group that you dreamed of a bison surrounded by fire, and then seeing that image etched the very next day into stone. Coincidence or was something deeper? Here's a quirky thought. Sleep cycles in the Ice Age may not have resembled our tidy eight hours. Without clocks, people likely doze in segments, sleeping a while, waking to tend the fire, drifting off again. In a way, you live the whole night half asleep, your dreams braided with waking moments of stoking embers or listening to the wind. Not unlike those nights now, when you wake at 3 a.m., scroll your phone, then collapse back into slumber, except with fewer memes and more mammoth bones. Historians still puzzle over whether early dreams inspired rituals. Were shamans dreamers first? Did visions blur into myths, shaping the earliest religions? The evidence is faint, but the question lingers, as mysterious as the flicker of shadows on stone walls. Tonight, though, you simply let go. The fire hums low, warmth pools against your side, and outside, the frozen world stretches endless and silent. You dream, as they once did, under the Ice Age sky. Dreams that carried humanity forward, stitching imagination to survival, until morning came again. And so, as the last embers of the Ice Age night fade in your mind, we begin to wind down together. If you've enjoyed this chapter, stay tuned as we uncover even more fascinating stories from history. There are countless moments tucked away in the folds of time that shape the way we live and rest today, and each one deserves to be unraveled slowly with the same warmth and curiosity you've carried through this journey. Take a deep breath and picture the fire again, its glow still lingering in your eyes, though the night outside stretches wide and endless. Imagine the soft weight of fur across your chest, the warmth of others breathing beside you, and the snow piled quietly against the walls of your shelter. The cold is no longer something sharp and cruel. It's simply there, held back by fire, by closeness, by cleverness. It's easy to forget, in the modern world of heated blankets and thermostat dials, that sleep was once the most delicate act of survival. Every night was a gamble, every rest a victory. And yet, out of those long, frozen evenings came not only endurance, but also stories, songs, dreams, small sparks that lit the way toward everything that followed. So let yourself relax into that thought. Humans have always found ways to make the night gentler, softer, and safe enough to close our eyes. And if they could do it with stone, fur, and fire, then perhaps your own rest tonight can feel just as secure. The flames dim. The snow falls softly outside, and your breath joins the rhythm of countless others across millennia. Sleep comes easily, and with it, peace.